So t tell me about table tipping. As I understand it, it can be done psychically as well as um, uh, yes. it's not necessarily it, it's not necessarily physical mediumship, and it can be done in the light as as well. If, yeah. if people if people want to get table tipping, what's the best way for them to do that, and why would they anyway? Uh, the easiest way is buy a table that's got wheels. <laughs> 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 but if you want spirit to do it, then the table, if you want spirit to do it, the heavier the table, the better. Um, so table tipping can be done one of three ways. It can be done by spirit, ideally. It can be done by someone uh, pushing the table. Uh, and that can be consciously or subconsciously through micro movements, or it can be done with us manipulating the energy. So every phenomenon we can get with spirit, we can also get without spirit. So we can manipulate the energy just like spirit can, and we can create phenomena. Um, so table dipping, we ideally want to be working towards spirit controlled, unless you are specifically working towards um, working with cryptoplasm or telekinetically. Um, so you're going to be better off normally with a wooden table, it tends to conduct energy the best, though plastic will work, metal will work. But if you're starting out, wood's going to tend to be easiest for the energy. Uh, and as I said, a heavier table is going to be much better because uh, if you've got a heavy table, it's going to be much harder for somebody to push, but the weight of the table will mean nothing to spirit. Um, and yeah, I've seen I've seen big snooker tables levitate in, in daylight when the energy is right. Um, a good technique I often give people if you're worried that you may be pushing the table or somebody may be pushing the table, and it may not be intentional, it, I said micro movements, you, you're not aware that you're pushing the table. Um, great one is get plasticine or Play-Doh. Um, put it around the table and ask everyone to put their fingers on top of the Play-Doh. Um, and it, your, your hands should be light enough that you're not going to leave an imprint in that Play-Doh. So afterwards, if there is an imprint in that Play-Doh, you know that you have put too much pressure on the table. So that means you've pushed the table either consciously or subconsciously. So let's say you've got a group who want to start. <clears throat> Would you say start in the darkness or start in light? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm nothing against groups wanting to work towards light, and, and I definitely encourage it for a lot of people. Not everyone is going to be best suited for doing phenomena in light, and that's fine. It has its place. Um, I would always say start in the dark. Give your spirit team a chance to actually develop the phenomena without any interference from light, which is going to be dispersing the energy that you're building. And then once it's built and your spirit team know how to do the phenomena, then you can introduce light and you're going to progress much quicker than, than starting at the deep end. You don't learn to swim by throwing someone into the deep end. Some people do, some people do survive, some people don't. Um, but generally you would start in the shallow end and you would, you would build up to it. So let's say you've got a group of six people and they've got a big table. Should they be in a small room or a big room? Um, in theory, the size of the room shouldn't matter because what would happen is as sitters, you're going to create an energetic grid and, and that would basically become the table. So the room itself shouldn't make a difference to the grid. Um, I suppose the bigger the room, the more movement, the more space you've got for spirit to move that table around. But so, the, yeah, the size of the room shouldn't matter too much. Um, ideally as dark as possible if you've got metal if you're new to it try and cover any metal um, so it's not giving off static try and use wooden chairs so again it's not creating static remove your jewelry um, select someone to be a medium and someone to be a circle leader so if you don't have a medium then it's much more likely that the sitters minds are going to influence the energy even if spirit are in control if you haven't got a medium to be directing or harnessing that energy then anyone's thoughts wants and desires are just going to influence that energy uh, and energy will always take the path of least resistance so if our mind can do the work our mind will do the work because it takes less energy to do that than to let spirit do it um so by having a circle leader and a medium we help prevent that from happening um ideally sit people where the energy is going to be best so some people are very good at giving energy some are very good at holding the energy if you're not good at sensing energy, the technique I often give people is get a glass tumbler, put it upside down on the table, ask everyone just to put their finger on the glass tumbler. If it doesn't move after a minute, swap people around. And what will happen is when you're sitting where everyone is energetically in the right place, so that's where you've got some people who are good at giving the energy, some are good at holding the energy, that glass tumbler will move. Then I would get rid of the glass tumbler and you know that that's your seating position for this table to be. Very useful. And while you're sitting, should you have music on or silence or a combination? 
10 minutes music, 10 minutes silence, what's the best configuration? I, I'm a big fan of sound. So whether that's doesn't necessarily mean you have to be singing along, but I like to have music in the background because then you've got a constant source of energy um, for spirit to use. Um, because if everyone goes quiet, the energy is going to drop. And a big mistake people have, make as well is with any type of phenomena, but especially with table tipping, once the table starts moving, starts shaking, don't pay any attention to it. Just ignore it. Keep doing what you're doing with it, singing, talking. Because what's happening is the energy is building. As soon as you focus on it, it will die because you are now blocking the flow of energy by you focusing. It's called the observer effect in science. So ignore it. Let it move. Let it build. Once it's strong, then you can start to pay attention to it and interact with it. But if you start paying too much attention in the beginning, you'll block it. So I think it's good to have music in the background so you've got that constant source of energy. Also, I know some groups do bit, get put off by sound, but in today's age, we need to be able to, we should be able to sit in a busy train station and do trance because we should be able to not let that sound affect us. And we don't want to be in a deep state of trance, not be used to sound. And then if there's a loud bang or something, it's going to really affect our psyche. So would you have loud music or uh, soft music? I mean, I, I know David always has really loud music in his seances. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an old school thing to have that really loud music. I personally like to have quieter music. I think quieter music is better. The volume isn't necessarily the issue. Um, it's The music is the constant energy, and you want music that's ideally going to have an emotional response in the sitters because it means they're going to harmonize their energy better. So Christmas music is great music to use because it, it generally makes us feel good. It gives us, for most of us, it gives us good memories. Um and that will harmonize the energy much better. So that doesn't have to be loud. It just has to be on enough for people to acknowledge it. What, what, about, got... what about indigenous music with a strong drum beat? Is that something that, that uh, works well with physical? It can do for the right groups. So again, it's really individual basis. So for some people, Christmas music will work. Other people will do great with, with that chanting music. Some will do well with gong, gong music. It, it's really about finding what's going to work for your group and what way may, may work for one individual may not work for another individual. So, and that's where you might have a sitter who's got the best intentions, but they're just not right for your group. Absolutely fascinating.